Hi everybody, Dan Ullman, Matt Burner, your special coverage of the 50 Cent Early Pick 4 at Penn National on Wednesday. Races 1 through 4, stakes races 2 through 4, race number 4, the DRF.com Formulator Race mm -hmm. of the Day, the fabulous Strike Stakes. You're going to want to head on over to the Race of the Day event page, download those free Formulator Pass performances and handicap along with us in the Pick 4. We begin with race number 1, post time 6.05 Eastern. It is an allowance race. It's got a lot of early gas in it. Yeah, I think this thing is going to be a barbecue up front, and I think it helps set up for some horses that maybe don't come from 100 out of it. We'll talk about one that comes from 100 out of it, but I think horses that can sit two or three lengths off of this thing early, I think they're going to have a giant, giant advantage. I want three horses in here. The six Zippers Hero, I think, has that ability going from seven-eighths of a mile back to six. I think you're going to see him come from a little bit off of it. The eight Bowtie Diva, it, she's just going to come from a mile and a half out of it, but the good thing is they're going to be burning early on, and the horse they're going to have to beat is the number nine, Pistol Annie. Uh, I think Pistol Annie is the horse to beat. He's sh the one, she's the one that I would lean on if we were using Ticketmaker for the pick four. Ticketmaker available, DRF.com in Formulator. She would be my lone. Love that outside post, love that stalking yeah. ability to just park herself off of the pay sources, get the jump on the true closers. But you're going six, eight, nine. I would use the nine pistol Andy as my A. Zipper's hero going out for a very hot barn, getting back to her favorite race course, Penn National. Another horse that would benefit from pace would be my B. And I'd also use Amanda's Best as a backup. This is a horse who's kind of stepping up in class, but she's a bit of a hard hitter. 15 mm -hmm. of 35 in the exotics. Maybe she needs a little bit more distance, but the pace setup is going to be right. I thought she ran okay in a slow race last time. Yeah, that's the only concern. This is going to be against a tougher field. You look at overall what the, the figs look like. And the one thing is this horse is going to get a setup where you're going to be coming from off the pace. In many ways, to me, the five and the eight are in a similar situation mm -hmm. where you're going to hope that they just throw it down early and you make one run. Race number two in this 50 cent pick four at Penn National on Wednesday night is the $100,000 Blue Mountain Juvenile Phillies Stakes, two year old Phillies. Bred in Pennsylvania. I think it could go many different ways in here. Let's talk a little bit about the number four, Bronx Beauty. They tried the synth. They're going for big money. I mm -hmm. understand. Now they're getting back to a surface where she's two for two, dirt, and getting Lasix for the first time. Maybe I'm just being too too simple-minded about this. I, I don't care about the synthetic race. Draw, you shouldn't. Draw a line through it. Those two races you have prior to that, the maiden score was over an intensely speed-friendly track. I don't want to hold that against or consider it a positive, but the big thing for me was the Colleen. I thought the Colleen, I know it was washed off the turf. It was a big, big effort, came from off the pace, showed a little bit of versatility. I think she's, in many ways, she is one of the horses to beat in here, if not the horse to beat. You're also going to use the six, Dixie Serenade, who I thought was in a really tough allowance race yeah. last time out at Parks. I like that runner-up a lot, Gibby. She showed some speed in that race, but I don't think she's speed crazy. You know when these two-year-old Philly races are bound to be a lot yeah. of gas in here? I think she can sit a decent stalking trip. Particularly with some speed drawn to her inside, I'm hopeful that she can come to hand a little bit. Like you say, that most recent allowance race, Gibby came back to win next out with an 81. The third place finisher, Angie Grant, and didn't win next up, but earned an 80 by or so, and they were 10 clear of this horse, Dixie Serenade. I just think she could work out a good trip. Indian Beauty, the number nine, is a horse that just won, ran off and hid in her debut by six lengths. Got a competitive 52 buyer and gets Lasix. What's not to like? Highest last out time form U.S. rating in the field with a 97. That field, you had the third place finisher win next out with a 56, the fourth place finisher next out winner with a 47. I'm very curious to figure out or see what kind of trip this horse works out, though, because I do think there is some other speed in here, and the last thing I really want is to get into some sort of duel early. You're going to go with the 4, 6, and 9 yeah. in here. In this race, I'm using the 9 as an A, but I'm also using the 10 Braden start, okay. and I like her a lot in this race, 12 to 1 on the morning line. She made her first two starts on synthetic. I'm not going to hold any of those races against her. They shipped her to Thistle Down, where the competition is weaker. Yeah. She ran on dirt, but she just ran right by those horses uh, on the turn with a three wide burst and then kept on in professional manner to win by almost six lengths. The runner up did come back to win, not with a high fig. I think Braden starts going to get the pace scenario here. I think dirt is what she wants. I like the fact she's been transferred to a solid trainer and has gotten a bullet five for yeah. a long workout over this track. I think she's an interesting price source. The nine and ten would be my A, my B would be Bronx Beauty and Dixie Serenade, two horses that you're using, and the one golden promise, and we talked about it before we came on, what a discrepancy between the time form U.S. and the buyer speed figure for this filly. Boy, if you believe the time form, folks, she's a prime contender, and if you believe buyer, she's one of the fringe players. Yeah, very similar to what you've got with the run two back for Bronx Beauty, where the buyer is relatively light for the one horse. It's a 43 for the four Bronx Beauty. It was a 44, but the time form U.S. ratings that kind of correspond with those 
96 for each of them. The 96 has put them squarely in contention. So she'll be a backup. 10-9 for me as A is 1-4-6 as B is 4-6-9 for Matt. Race number three, the $100,000 Swatara Stakes for three-year-olds and up. I'm not needed. It. I'm not needed. It. Matt said put a ring around it. He's been crowing about this source all afternoon. Single. Yeah, I like Discreet Lover a lot in this spot. And I think a lot of it has to do with Discreet Lover. You look at his overall body of work and you go, what are we, what are we doing here? You, it, there's no reason this horse should be running in the Whitney or the Woodward or any of these other races where he was facing big names. You see Gunrunner all over. You see Seymour Dini. Pennsylvania Derby? Pennsylvania Derby champion stakes. That was a, that was an interesting spot. That was one of those where, again, I don't know what you want to call that happened. But Paige McKenney, he likes that race right. track parks. Two starts back, he ran in a more realistic spot. And I think it was a confidence builder. I think it, finally the light bulb went back on and he jumped up in a big way. The Richard Small at Laurel last time, maybe you disagree a little bit as far as the trouble that a Fleet Willie had early on. I thought it was just an absurd he, race. He had trouble. Yeah. It was an absurd race. Absurd. And this horse, considering also the way the Time Form US has it color-coded as intensely closer-friendly, he was out there pressing the pace throughout, put away Watershed, who's still running right now. He went on, okay, he got engulfed by a Fleet Willie, but he came back and showed a little bit of heart. From a FIG standpoint, this horse lays over this field. Is part of the reason why you're so bullish about Discreet Lover because you like Discreet Lover or because you loathe the horse that figures to be a fairly heavy favorite in the three Tommy Macho? I thought Discreet Lover ran a winning race last time and unfortunately for him a horse freaked out on him. I thought he ran a winning race. He has all the figures. There's nothing here that tells me that he should not be considered one of the horses to be, if not the horse to be. So you're singling. Single. Number two, that is Discreet Lover. The horse to beat is Tommy Macho. I think most people would say you're going to say the horse to beat is Discreet Lover. No, no, he, he's um, the, he, Tommy Macho on past races is the right. horse to beat. He's taking a, Recent form, a, he's a significant class drop. I have to admit, you know, he ran third in the Carter and third in the Met. He probably should have won the should've Carter. Should have won the Carter. The Metropolitan, he was never going to win. The Belmont Spring, he's not going to beat Mind Your Biscuit. He's not going to beat Trey Fine. He's not going to beat Sharp Azteca. He's finally facing a field since the Carter that he can beat. Sure. The distance is somewat of a question. He 100%. hasn't gone two turns since the Richard Small of 2016. It seemed like Todd Pletcher wanted to make him a seven furlong, one mile, one turn horse in New York this year. He just has a speed figure edge over everyone but Discreet Lover in this race. If you're just looking at it from a buyer speed figure standpoint, mm -hmm. for me, I will use Discreet Lover. I have to use Tommy Macho. I'm not going to let Todd knock me out with this horse. But one horse I want to use, and I'm not sure where I want to use him in Ticket Maker yet. To me, he's the kind of horse that'd be a really interesting win bet sure. at a big price. But in the pick four, where he's kind of, yeah, kind of a backup, yeah. and his name is Johnny Jump Up. And Johnny Jump Up's last race was a jump up yeah. because he had never really run a buyer like that before, maybe only once in his career. And he ran an 88 buyer, and I thought he looked really good doing it. He went to the front. The fractions were kind of realistic, but he took heat from two horses on the turn. He flicked them away. A couple of those horses have come back, earned buyers of 85, 86. The time form U.S. pace projector for this race has Johnny Jump Up yep. getting to the lead and backing it down in a race that favors horses on or near the lead. He's an interesting backup. You're fired up about Discreet Lover at 10 to 1. Both of us are kind of blah about Tommy Macho yeah. while recognizing he's the horse to beat. Matt's singling. I will use the 2 and the 3, and I have to decide where I will use the 1. But I will use him either as an A or as a backup. DRF Formulator Race of the Day, Fabulous Strike Handicap, has its Race of the Day video. We've given all the nuts and bolts analysis. Pick four, who are you using? Two horse race to me. I think it's Blue Moon Ace, and I think it's Awesome Banner, and they're also coming out of common races. I just think they are way the horses to beat. One horse race for me. Blue Moon Ace has got the figs. I think he's going to get an honest pace to track in here under Julian Pimentel. Kevin Patterson wins 46% of the time. Can he win one for me? <laughs> if I'm alive even, going into the last leg of the 50 cent pick four and the anchor, of course, the $200,000 fabulous strike. Real fun sequence at Penn National. Always a nice evening of racing, the evening before Thanksgiving. An approximate post time, 6.05 Eastern. Good luck.